Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a result that the German mathematician George Cantor proved, namely that there's an infinite number of infinities. Let's discover the maths. The first thing to be aware of is that given a set X, the power set of X, denoted by Px, is the set consisting of all subsets of X. For example, if X is the subset ABC, these are the subsets of X. The easiest way is to write them in an orderly manner by the number of elements. In this case, X has three elements and Px has eight elements, that is, two raised to the power of three, the number of elements. The number of elements, as you know, is called the cardinal number or the cardinality of the set. In general, if x is a finite set, then the cardinal number of Px is two raised to the cardinality of x. For example, a set of five elements has two raised to the power five subsets, which is 32. We saw in an earlier video that the idea of cardinals can be extended to infinite sets. Two sets are said to have the same cardinality if there's a bijection or one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of the two sets. The sets of all natural numbers, integers, and rational numbers, n, z, and q, have the same cardinality. These sets are said to be countable. Cantor's famous diagonal argument shows that there is no bijection between n and r, the set of real numbers. In other words, r is not a countable set. To prove that there's an infinite number of infinities, we rely on another famous result of Cantor's, which is known simply as Cantor's theorem. This states that for any set X, the cardinality of X is strictly less than the cardinality of all the subsets of this set. It's then enough to start from the cardinality of the natural numbers which is the infinity known as aleph zero or aleph null, and to consider at each step the power set of the previous set. Cantor's theorem indicates that the cardinality of n is strictly less than the cardinality of all the subsets of n, which is less than the cardinality of the subsets of the subsets of n, and so on without end. So that in this way we arrive at the conclusion that there is an infinity of distinct infinities. I hope you found this useful. Check out our other videos on the subject of infinity and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.